the parish of Newcastle, Newtown, Mount Kennedy with Calgary, welcomes you to our service of Holy Communion on this, the third Sunday after the Epiphany. We especially thank Canon Adrian Galligan and the parish of Rathfarnham for providing us with the facility of using the Millennium Chapel here in Rathfarnham. Wherever you may be this day, you are most welcome and we trust that you will enjoy your time of sharing with us. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. A sentence of scripture from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. God, who said, out of darkness light shall shine, has caused his light to shine in our hearts, the light which is knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We join together in saying, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed and in what way have left undone. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, 
in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect for the Third Sunday after the Epiphany. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very important city. A visit required three days. On the first day, Jonah started into the city. He proclaimed, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overturned. The Ninevites believed God. They proclaimed a fast and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to Mark chapter 1 beginning at verse 14. Glory to you Lord Jesus Christ. Now after John was arrested Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men, and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. Imagine being asked to travel to the largest city in the world and to inform its inhabitants of some very important news. Though a daunting task, for some it might not pose any significant issue. However, suppose that message, that news, that you or I were to bring was one that we considered might likely receive a hostile reaction. And as a result, our life would therefore be in considerable danger. I wonder how we would react. It is reasonable to consider that you or I would be, to say the least, apprehensive. And what if such a journey was to be on foot, travelling a distance of some 400 miles? Whilst the largest city in the world today is probably Tokyo, over 2,800 years ago, in the year 783 BC, the then largest city in the world was Nineveh, the capital of the Assyrian Empire. 
It was located outside what is today the city of Mosul in modern Iraq. Nineveh had a reputation for being a dangerous and evil city. There are many cities in today's world that have a poor reputation when it comes to personal safety. Such places are places we try to avoid if at all possible. Talking of avoidance, our Old Testament reading today is about the prophet Jonah and God's instruction to him to go and tell, to go and tell the citizens of that city and district that they could receive mercy and forgiveness if they repented. But as we know, Jonah ran away and took a boat to Tarshish. And we might well ask, where is Tarshish? The present day location is unknown, and perhaps that adds another level of understanding to the story. Jonah ran away from God, going literally in the opposite direction, out into the great unknown. Jonah, as we know, was swallowed up by a great fish or by a whale, and Jonah was rescued, and thus our reading picks up from this point, whereby the word of God came to Jonah for a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. On this occasion, Jonah obeyed. There is so much contained in this short passage. A calling by God, just as our reading from the Gospel account of Mark tells of Jesus calling the fishermen, Simon and Andrew, along with James and John. Instruction from God. Proclaim the message I give you. Obedience. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord on this second occasion and went to Nineveh. Simon and Andrew at once left their nets and followed Jesus. James and John left their father Zebedee in the boat and followed Jesus. Following. Jonah followed God's calling. The disciples followed the call of Jesus. But obedience and following come at a cost. Jonah feared for his own life entering the city and district of Nineveh. Simon and Andrew, together with James and John, left not just the family business, a business that had likely been passed down from generation to generation for many, many generations, but they were also leaving the familiar. What is familiar is often, although not always, something that provides a certain degree of security. On the other hand, the unfamiliar can present and represent the unknown. Jonah was undoubtedly pleasantly surprised at the reception he received in Nineveh. The Ninevites believed God. The king of Nineveh issued a proclamation requesting the inhabitants to call urgently on God, to give up their evil ways, and declared that God might have mercy on them. And God did indeed have compassion upon them, and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. God's message is not for the few, it is for everyone. Perhaps the question that we as followers of Jesus Christ should be asking is as follows. Do we truly wish to spread the good news to the world, or are we simply happy and content to keep this news for ourselves? Perhaps by doing so, it makes us feel that little bit more special, that perhaps we are, as it were, in the inner circle. And therein lies the danger, the danger of complacency and self-righteousness. Jonah represents those of us who consider that we can hide from God. 
In Psalm 139 we read, O Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know me when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Where can I go from your spirit? And where can I go from your presence? We can try to run from God, but we cannot hide from God. Mark's Gospel account tells us that Jesus' ministry differed from that of John the Baptist. Jesus went out as a wandering prophet. He went out into Galilee, proclaiming the good news. The time has come. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Many of Jesus' listeners were poor, oppressed and without hope. And so his words offered freedom, justice and hope. And what was and is this good news? What is this message of repentance? Well, repentance means turning away, turning around, turning away from the old ways. And it also means a calling, a calling to a new loyalty, a calling of letting go. Lord God, give us the strength and courage to listen to your call, to come and follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Loving God, we thank you for your church. We pray for our Bishop Michael and for all who witness, worship and work in these dioceses and this parish. In their diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the parish of Clondorkin and Rathcool, the clergy Alan Rootley and Martin O'Connor, and all who witness therein. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray you for everything we are able to share together, the inspiration of examples of faith, the insights of different traditions, the challenge of diverse experiences. Help us to learn from one another, never closing our minds to the diversity of your church. Help us to grow in faith day by day 
and help us to share what you have done for us so that our faith may be deepened and our service enriched. Though we are many, you have made us one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, reach out to your church and work in hearts everywhere to break down barriers, to overcome prejudice, and to bring people together in genuine love and understanding. Wherever your body is broken today, make us one, Lord. Amen. Lord of creation, whose glory is around and within us, open our eyes to your wonders, that we may serve you with reverence and know your peace at our lives' end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Loving God, we continue to hold our frontline workers, our decision makers, and all who strive to keep us safe during this time of this pandemic in our prayers. Give them the strength and resilience they need to stay the course, and may all the citizens of this nation show respect to and for one another. We remember in our prayers all who are in hospital at this time, and in particular those who are in intensive care. Spirit of God, come upon all who are grieving and those who mourn. In faith and trust we bring before you those who have died. May we with them come to fulfillment of your promised redemption. Merciful Father, Accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, almighty and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted, and in his holy gospel, 
commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death, we celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving Spirit that we may be made one in your holy Church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. body of Christ. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. May your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. For he is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen.
understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love, this day and always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.